Hello, it's Dr. Gilmet here, and we're doing confidence intervals with proportions in Excel today. And so today we want to calculate a confidence interval with proportions using Excel. This is really a straightforward process, and I think how you set it up is really key, and probably a couple of key pieces of understanding. So using an Arrowverse example, let us dive right in. Okay, because you know I love my Arrowverse. Oh no, get in! All right, so... Uh, Gideon, the AI on the Wave Rider, there is a picture of Gideon, is trying to create a simulation for success on the team uh, intervention in, for success on team intervention in time anomalies. To do this, she's trying to find out how successful McRory is in helping the team versus just breaking stuff. There is McRory breaking stuff. In a random sample of the last 50 excursions, Mick was helpful toward accomplishing the goal 37 times. And the other 13, he simply set stuff on fire. Okay, what we want to do is construct a 90% confidence interval for the proportion of times that Mick is actually helpful. So step number one is the assumptions. Given your homework problem, you may or may not need to do this. We can see that Gideon randomly sampled, right, in a random sample of the last 50 excursions. Thus, random and independent are satisfied. Also, given he's a superhero, we can reasonably assume he will be involved in more than 500 excursions. Heroes often find themselves needed. Um, this is probably not much of a stretch if you think about comic book heroes is potentially going through hundreds of comic book issues. Um, Heatwave is a pretty po popular character. For other examples, this is probably easier to reasonably assume. And finally, the success-failure assumption has to be greater than 10. Again, could be 5 or 8, depending on the book that you're in. So we're going to go off to Excel. All right, here we go. So remember, the successes was 37. So how would we? How do I know that, right? Because it said 37 times he was helpful. So I don't actually have to do uh, N minus P. So note... Um, you do not have to do n times uh, p here, okay? Uh, no, n times p, okay? But how then do I get the failures? Well, I know that the sample size is 50, and I know that he was successful 37 times, so that means that um, he's 13 failures. Because these two numbers are going to add up to the sample size of um, 50. So here, the assumptions are met. The answer is yes. Okay, so, step two, the calculations. We want to set these up in Excel, so I'm going to go back to Excel real quick, right? All right, so here we go. I know that the sample size is 50. P hat is my sample proportion. That is my number of successes divided by my sample size, okay? So that's going to give me 74% successful on excursions. Now, my standard error is going to be equal to the square root of that p hat times 1 minus p hat divided by the sample size, okay? Um, this multiplication sign right here, super duper important. Now, my z-score. Now, note. Because it's a 90% confidence interval, this implies that alpha is equal to 10% or 0 0.10, okay? Now, because every confidence interval is a two-tailed test, um, basically what that means is we are looking for 0.05, in the left tail or 0.95 in the right tail. So for my critical Z score, I could do a uh, norm. Oh, I gotta do equal sign equals norm, right? Uh, standard inverse and the probability being 0 0.05. All right, because 5% and 5% is gonna give us a 10% alpha we're looking for. And that'll give us a negative z-score, which is perfectly okay. Um, if we went ahead and did uh, norm.s.inverse this way, a lot of times in books and stuff, they're going to say 1 minus alpha divided by 2. 
And what you get when you do this is you're going to have 0 0.05 subtracted from 1, and that's going to give you 0.95, and that gives you the positive z-score. The, uh, the sign doesn't matter because the lower one's going to be negative and the upper one is going to be positive. Okay. Now, if you need the margin of error, the margin of error is simply z-score times the standard error. Okay. Um, and then the lower is simply p hat minus the margin of error. See, that's where the negative comes in. If you had used a negative, that would be your lower. And if you have um, p hat plus the margin of error, that's going to give you your upper. And you'll notice that's exactly where the um, positive z-score comes from. Okay, so basically we have about 64% and 84% are our lower and upper values. Okay, so, um, oh, let me go back to edit. All right. And so we're going to go 64% here and 84% here. And so we are 90% confident that the true proportion of times McRory is actually helpful is between 64 and 84%. And this is something that Gideon can use to begin her simulations. Okay. So this is really important. Now, what what this confidence interval actually means, what we're measuring, some of the other things I'm going to cover in other videos. But if you liked this particular one and it helped you use Excel and calculate a confidence interval, that makes me